So let's refresh on how we can transform parent functions. So here we have a Desmos set up. I will post the link to this Desmos in the, um, in the description so you can try it yourself and follow along if you want. So let's start off with a parent function of x squared, which you see here as the blue line. If we were to transform this function, we basically have four parameters we can work with. We have an a value, we have a k value, we have a d value, and a c value. Hopefully you have some memory of what each of these things does to the function. If not, we'll review them quickly here. So what's going to happen if I increase the a value of this function? Remember, a is the thing that's out in front. What's going to happen to that blue function? Well, let's see. What's it doing? See how it's stretching that function upwards? Um, that's what it does to the function. It stretches it, basically. And what if I make a value smaller than 1? What's going to happen? It compresses that function. The red line represents, by the red, the red dotted line represents the parent function, the original parent function. So um, increasing a stretches the function, decreasing a smaller than one compresses the function, and if we turn it negative, we should remember that it's going to basically reflect that function in the x-axis, right? So we can do all sorts of things to play with a. Okay, let's reset that to one. What does the k value do? The k value is inside the brackets here, inside of our function f. Um, so what does that do? And we see if we increase that, it's going to actually compress the function. Now, it doesn't compress the function the same way as a does, right? a moves the function, basically stretches the function vertically, up and down, right? k is going to compress the function horizontally. And this is obvious if you look at that blue dot. See. The red dot here represents a point on the original function. The blue dot here represents where that same point would be if it's transformed to the, um, to the transformed function. So you can see, when I start at 1 and when I increase k, that blue point is just moving horizontally. And it doesn't matter where this red point starts, right, if, if we talk about that point there, it's going to always do that. It just moves that horizontally inwards towards the y-axis, basically, right? Even if I bring this around to the other side, it's going to move that in. If k gets smaller than 1, it stretches the function horizontally. Or it looks like it compresses the function, right, in terms of the y direction, but it's actually stretching it horizontally. It's moving that blue point outwards, right, as we can see. So that's what k does. Oh, and if it becomes negative, it's just going to reflect that function in the x-axis. Not all that exciting, or in the y-axis, sorry. Not all that exciting for a parabola, right, because a parabola um, is symmetric. But if we change this actually to maybe a cubic, right here, cubic, then you'd be able to see, right? So this stretching it horizontally, right, if, if it gets smaller. And if it gets negative, it's going to go the other way. So it reflects it in the y-axis, right? That's what changing k does. Okay, we'll stick with the, uh, the cubic. By the way, you can change the parent function to whatever you want, and it'll always work. Um, so looking now to d, what is d going to do if we mess with d? And you should remember d is this thing that's inside the brackets here beside the x. So if I increase d, what's going to happen? Think about it. Make a prediction. If I increase d, the function is going to move to the right. If I decrease d past 0, negative number, it's going to move it to the left. Right, So this is where we have to be careful because if we choose a d value of 2.3, in our equation we're actually going to put like x minus 2.3, right? It's going to be the opposite sign of whatever it is here. So just keep that in mind. And then if, lastly, if we change the c value, we should remember that makes it go up and down, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, so, and there's no flipping of the sign here, right? It's just a positive. So once again, just a very quick um, review. a vertically stretches. Oops, where is that? Zero. I want to put it back on zero. And I actually want to find that point. Where did that point go? It's all the way down here. Um, A vertically stretches and compresses, compresses the function. K horizontally stretches and compresses the function. D moves the functions left and right. And C moves it up and down. Now, we have this point here. And I just want to go into a little bit more detail about how this point is transformed. Let's actually choose a different function as well. I'm going to choose 1 over x because that's a little bit more exciting. 1 over x. There we go. 
So we know 1 over x is just the base um, reciprocal function, right? It's going to have an asymptote at x equals 0 and at y equals 0. So the function approaches like that. Um, so if we transform it, how can we find where that transformed point ends up? So here I'm, I'm increasing the d. I'm going to decrease the c. Um, maybe I'll change the a a little bit as well. Let's make that small. Let's just make it smaller than one like that. And the k value, I don't know. Let's flip that around. So the question is, how can we find out if we start with this point right here, right? How can we find out where that point's going to end up on the transformed function? And we can sort of use this as our model, this equation here as our model. But if we go down here, the Desmos actually shows you what's happening to get that final point. In order to start from this point and get to this final point, the x value, and I can, I can label the points here, so that's 1, 1, and then this is this, this point right here. So to, to, if we're starting with an x value of 1, right, in order to get this final x value of 0.3, essentially what you have to do is you have to transform x1 in this way. Um, you're going to have to divide by the k value because k sort of inversely affects the, um, the k value. And then you're going to have to add d to it. d, remember, is our horizontal shift left or right. So that's how you transform that x value. And then to transform the y value, because the a value is directly corresponding to, to the y value, right? If we increase a, the function is going to stretch upwards. Um, so a times the f of x value, so, so the, the y value, remember f of x1 just means the y value, so the, the 1 basically here. We're going to have to multiply by our a value and then add c, and that's how we get that final transformed point here. So you can apply these same transformations to any type of functions, and as long as you know your k, d, a, and c values, you can always find where that point goes on the final function, right, just by using that pattern. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next section. This also works no matter what your function is. I could even turn this into a sine graph, like sine of x, right? So there's our point on our original function, and this is where the point's going to end up on our transformed function. So feel free to play with this Desmos, um, or even use this Desmos to check your answers when you're doing your homework. And you can see where the starting point um, is and where it's going to end up on the final function.